Hey guys, in this tutorial I'm going to be introducing you to the Layer Manager in the Character Composer mode in Crazy Talk Animator 3. So we're going to talk about uh, what, what the Layer Manager is, how you can use it, and various ways you can use it to improve your character. Now to demonstrate this, we're going to be using our Freebone character under Actor Freebone right here. You can find this zombie character. That's the character I currently have on the screen. So let's take him right into Composer mode. I'm going to go over here to the top left. And once we're in composer mode, we're going to go ahead and take a look on the right hand side here. You can see we have the content manager with all our content, the scene manager with all the bones and everything, and the layer manager. This is one we're going to be talking about in this tutorial. Now you can click and drag and undock this if you want. Uh, click and drag back to dock it back again. Uh, for this one, I'll kind of just leave it out right here. And you can see all the different bones with their respective sprites attached on our uh, layer manager here as well. Now, if you don't want to see all these sub layers, you can go ahead and collapse your list by going up here and selecting list collapse, or you can just expand it by selecting list expand. Okay, and you can hide selected, hide unselected, unhide all, and invert selected. That'll select everything but the one that we had selected before, and all that stuff. Pretty self-explanatory. You can change your thumbnail size as well. Okay, I'm just going to collapse the list for now. Now let's take a look at uh, moving the uh, individual layers here. So on the top we have this uh, bone layer 10 right here. If we move it around you can see the this sprite will be above all the other sprites. So it's because it's at the top of our hierarchy here. Uh, if I move that to the bottom, you can just go down like this. If I move it to the bottom then it's going to be behind everything. So you know pretty simple straightforward stuff. Let's bring that back up to the top. You can also multiple select things as well. So if I wanted to take for example this, uh, this leg, this uh, rear leg right here. This one right here in our uh, rear arm. Currently, at the, they're at the bottom of the hierarchy uh, because that's pretty much logically where we'd want them. But I can shift select these and I can click and drag them. And you can see that red line will indicate where we're placing them. And I can place them above our uh, right arm as well. So if, if we do that, it's going to be at the top of the hierarchy in front of everything except for the arm there. And this arm is going to be at the top layer uh, just like that. Okay, so that's a really easy way to. Uh, Hold shift and select and you can click and drag multiple layers up or down on your hierarchy. But we're going to keep our hierarchy like this. Now you can also do uh, sub layers as well. So if we go down to our bone layer 10 here, you can see each bone sub bone layer will be indicated by the uh, blue highlighted bone that we have selected. So right now if I select uh, let's say bone 12 right now and I go into preview mode, what's going to happen is if I uh, click and drag this bone 12, if we move it like over here, Notice it's going in front of our shoulder, and that's because the bone 12 on the hierarchy is actually above the bone 10, which is our shoulder bone. Okay, so if we select, uh, if we move it over here, we can kind of move it like this, and it'll be above our shoulder. Okay, generally that's the way you'd want it, but if we didn't want it, we can just go ahead and uh, in preview mode and go and select bone 10, and we can click and drag bone 10 to the top if we wanted for some reason to have the shoulder at the very top of the hierarchy. Well, then we can go ahead and select bone 12 and preview one more time. And then because bone 10 is above uh, bone 12 on the hierarchy, when we do the same thing we did before, it's going to go behind the upper arm. So, you know, there may be some situations where you might want to do something like this. This isn't probably one of them, but uh, just kind of wanted to show you the result of moving your bone uh, layers and sub layers. So let's take that bone 10 and move it back down below bone 11. All right, and we can twirl this one up right now. On top of that, we have visibility over here. So if we want to uh, you know, make any of our layers invisible, we can do so by selecting the uh, eye icon here. You can see the result of that, pretty straightforward. And we also have the ability to lock layers. So in a situation like this, you see where the, uh, the bone layer 10 is kind of over top of the root, the uh, upper body right there. Say for example, we wanted to select the root, but we accidentally clicked here, whoops, we selected bone layer 10 instead, and we wanted to select the root. What we can do is we can uh, lock the bone layer 10 right here, and you can see all those bones will now become disabled. And then when I click here, it'll select the root, and we won't select the uh, upper arm. So if you have like layers on top of layers, uh, locking them is a very useful way to get the uh, correct selection. Now let's take a quick look at bone customization here. You may notice there's a kind of a grayed out circle uh, beside each one of these bones here, or each one of these layers rather, and you can see it has active or deactivate. That's because we currently have auto active bone on. If we deselect that, we can manually decide which ones we want to have active or deactive. Inactive, rather. So let's go ahead and select this bone layer 14. I'm going to just uh, twirl it down here. And you can see that uh, right now, if we preview this, I can select, uh, you know, say for example, 
this part of our bone right here, the uh, leg, and notice that the bone is staying on the mesh as we do our, you know, ballerina move there. You can see the uh, bone is staying on the image map and it's not moving off that image map. However, if we uh, end preview mode here and select, uh, let's say, bone 15 here and deactivate bone 15, you'll notice that the, uh, the apparent layer there will have a kind of like a half active thing right there. And you'll notice if I click off of it, this bone will now be grayed out, which means it's inactive. Okay, so let's preview one more time and take a look at the difference here. If this bone is active or deactive, or inactive rather. So you can see now if I uh, click and drag it around, if I click and drag the uh, uh, child bone, notice that the gray bone isn't going to be, uh, you know, pinned to the uh, image map. You can kind of take it off. And you may, may want to do this in certain situations, but in this case, we want our knee to kind of bend a bit more naturally instead of at the ankle right here. So we'd probably want to keep that active. So we can just go ahead and select uh, active after we exit preview mode here and reactivate that. Now, uh, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, auto active bone again. Let's activate it one more time here. And if I go over here into the bone editor and I decide to move my entire like leg hierarchy off the uh, image, so let's go ahead and select this uh, uh, hierarchy right here. There we go. And if I decide to move this off of my leg, for example, we would over here, uh, for example, maybe rotate it a little bit. Notice that uh, everything that is currently off of the image map will suddenly become inactive. And that's because it doesn't have any image map underneath it to manipulate. So any of these, any of these bones that are off the uh, image map, if you have auto active or inactive mode on, uh, when you move the bone off the uh, actual image map, they will become disabled and you will no, long, no longer be able to uh, manipulate this particular part of the image map. Okay, so I'm just going to control Z that and undo that. We don't really, really want to uh, have that off the image map right now. We'll close down our bone editor there. Okay, so that's what uh, active and inactive means. And you'll notice also some of these layers have another uh, icon here called stretch bind. Now stretch bind, let's take a look at this uh, top layer here, this uh, frontal uh, front arm rather. If I preview this, what's going to happen if I move the uh, bone hierarchy away from the... Uh, if I move the layer away from the apparent uh, hierarchy there, you'll notice that it'll stretch the image map just like this. And that's what a stretch bind is. Um, it'll kind of stretch along the apparent uh, uh, image map along with the, uh, with the layer here. We can rotate it just like this normally, but if we uh, move it away, we can kind of stretch it and it'll kind of stretch along uh, with, it'll stretch the map along with its movement, okay? If you don't have stretch bind on, so say we deactivate that, and I go ahead and preview one more time, then if I move the uh, bone, it'll kind of just move out like this, and it will no longer stretch the, uh, the image map beneath it. Okay, so that's what stretch bind means, basically. A uh, really pretty simple ex explanation there. We'll just reactivate that, because that's the way we want it. Now let's take a look at these uh, icons here along the bottom. I'm going to select this uh, bone 6 layer, our rear arm there. And if I click and drag it out, you'll notice that uh, because of the image map underneath it, the skeleton's eye and part of its teeth are kind of, you know, kind of transposed onto this uh, rear uh, layer here. And say, for example, we wanted a situation where this arm might pop out or, you know, rotate out or something, and we didn't want that uh, face, obviously, to appear on the image map. What we can do in this case is we can select that layer and go over here to launch. We can launch an external editor. In this case, it's going to load up Photoshop. And once in Photoshop, we can do some really quick and simple uh, image editing. I'm just going to kind of zoom in here on my, uh, whoops, kind of accidentally uh, threw uh, paint on there. All right, so uh, say, for example, we wanted to get rid of that uh, that eye and the teeth and everything like that. Well, I can just go ahead and, uh, you know, let's uh, hold Alt and uh, uh, make sure we have our brush selected there. Hold Alt and click on this white area, and that's going to give me some uh, white, and I'm going to just kind of click and drag all the way over here. We're going to kind of create... We're going to erase all that stuff. We're going to give us ourselves a base uh, white mesh here. All right, and then let's click uh, Alt and left click on this uh, gray area here, and we can kind of create a more shadowed area. All right. I am not a Photoshop pro by any means, so bear with me while I struggle through this uh, process here. And uh, there we go. We'll create a nice uh, shadow, and maybe just uh, touch it up here, get rid of that uh, black stuff. Over there, all right, and then we can create a black outline there as well. I'm going to alt and click on the black, and let's make our brush size a little bit smaller there, I'm using the bracket keys for those who are not aware. And I'm going to just use a uh, not too bad for using a mouse actually. Um, maybe I spoke too soon. Anyway, so we can just do that. We can create ourselves some uh, some custom bandages 
on our mummy here. Again, I am far from a professional. I'm doing a 10 second sketch up job here, so bear with me. And there's our uh, arm. So once we do that, we can go ahead and select file and uh, save. And when we save that, we can go back into Photoshop or rather into uh, Crazy Talk Animator here. And in Crazy Talk Animator, you'll see that our arm is now updated. All right, a little wobbly there on the bottom, but uh, you know, from far away, it looks okay. All right, so that's one way you can like um, edit your uh, sprites, your layers in uh, Photoshop. Let's take a look now at uh, duplicating uh, certain layers and masking them. And to do that, I'm going to preview this uh, front arm here, the bone 10 layer. So let's go ahead and preview. And notice what happens now if I select my forearm, I can actually kind of, you know, manipulate my upper arm. You'll see it kind of, it'll kind of stretch and condense there uh, as we, as we rotate the uh, upper arm along there. Say, for example, we didn't want the rotation of the lower arm to affect the upper arm. We didn't want it to kind of stretch and condense it like that. Uh, in that case, what we can do is we can actually add our lower arm onto a separate layer. So let's go ahead out of preview here. And what I'm going to do is we're going to go into that hierarchy there. And bone 11 is our lower arm here. So what I want to do here is I want to duplicate this bone, this section of our sprite, our layer there, okay? And to do that, I can just go, to, go down here to duplicate layer. And it'll, it'll add a layer and it'll ask if you want to edit the mask. We certainly do, because in this case, we want to mask out uh, certain parts of our arm, such as the upper arm in this case. So we currently have uh, bone layer 11 selected. So this is our uh, lower arm layer. So we don't want the upper arm to be part of this. We want it to be separate from the upper arm. So what I can do is just mask out the upper arm here. Let's uh, take our hardness all the way up here and maybe uh, a little bit uh, down on the size. There we go. And let's just mask out the entire upper arm here. Now we kind of want to round it out around the uh, uh, forearm here. We're going to kind of round it just like this. You know, we don't want it to be a square right angle. We want it to be something like that. So now we just have this lower arm kind of rounded elbow section here. And once you're finished with that, just make sure you go ahead and remove background. And once I do that, pay attention to the uh, layer of thumbnails up here. It'll say background mask removed. You may pick the parent node to check the results. Okay. And you can see now we have this lower arm right here. And the upper arm is only the upper arm now. But I also want to modify the upper arm layer a little bit as well, or rather the mask. So we'll select that upper arm. You can see it's a little bit messy here as well. In addition, we also want to round out the upper arm. So what I'm going to do is just uh, make sure we have our mask editor up here so we can kind of see what we're doing. I'm going to erase all that stuff that I see. There's kind of some, you know, uh, random stuff that uh, is unmasked. Okay, so we'll mask all that out. And then I want to use my erase tool. And let's take the size down a little bit here. Something like that. And I'm going to erase this part right here. Kind of, kind of make it rounded out like I mentioned before. Uh, you always want to be able to uh, have a rounded rotation uh, when you have separate layers like this. Okay, so just do something like that. And that should work just fine. You can see our thumbnail images change slightly to have the uh, upper arm rounded out there. All right, so let's take out the mask editor now, or rather close it down. And if we preview now, let's select our bone 11 layer right there and preview now. And you can see now it'll be on a completely separate level, uh, layer rather, from the upper arm. So when we rotate it, it's no longer stretching that upper arm. And you can see we probably could fix the masking a little bit there, but uh, you kind of get the point there anyway. So now you can see the rotation is no longer affecting the upper arm, which in many cases is may, uh, maybe what you want to accomplish there. All right, so that's how you can use a duplicate layer and uh, mask out the upper layer, or the previous layer rather, to kind of create results like this. All right, so one more thing we're going to talk about here is the ability to add an image. So for add image, I'm going to select this bone la layer 11 here one more time. We're going to go into the uh, bones uh, right here. And you can see with the sub bone selected, we have this option now to add an image, okay? So this will add a separate image onto our hand. I currently have bone 12 selected, which is the character's uh, hand section, hand bone section here. And I'm gonna add a separate image. Now, before we add the image, I wanna make sure that we have everything taken care of in Photoshop, because in Photoshop, there's a couple things we need to do first. And one of them is make sure, making sure that the scale is correct, the transform scale. Okay, so let's select the uh, uh, layer right here. I'm going to select this uh, lower arm layer, and we're going to launch this separate layer in Photoshop. We just go ahead and select Update here, and you can see it'll move slightly over there. And this is our new uh, layer, uh, layer 11, I believe it was. Okay, so what I want to do here is I want to import in a separate image. We're going to import in an image of a boxing glove. Okay, and uh, what I'm going to do is go to File, let's go to Open, and there's an image on my desktop. 
called Glove. I've just downloaded this from uh, PNG image from uh, Google uh, Image Search. I'm going to press Control A, Control C, go back to my uh, regular layer here, and Control V to copy it. Okay, and so then we have this separate layer, this uh, boxing glove on a separate layer. You can see it's kind of facing the wrong way, and maybe the positioning is off. So what I'm going to do is press Control T to open up my transform parameters. All right, I'm going to click and drag it over my glove. Now the reason we're doing this in Photoshop is because when we import it into Crazy Talk Animator 3, it's much easier if you have all the dimensions and everything already set out on your image map mesh. Okay, so I'm going to just co I'll go ahead and kind of flip this over just like that and we can rotate it slightly as well. Maybe something like this. Just make sure it kind of covers up the entire uh, the entire hand there. All right, we'll just uh, there we go. Maybe too picky here. I think that works and we can mask out that uh, the hand part later on. So I press enter now and then we'll make our uh, lower layer invisible. So then we're going to go ahead and save this out as a separate image now, a separate PNG image. So I'm going to go to File, Save As, and we're just going to go and save it to our desktop as a PNG. Make sure we have PNG selected, and I call it 01. I can just go ahead and replace the one that I previously did. Okay, and we'll go ahead and press OK there. And then when we go to uh, Crazy Talk Animator uh, 3 right here, let's go to the uh, Bone 12 layer, this uh, hand, and I'm going to add an image that hand. Okay, and then we can import it. You want to make sure that you have that keep tr uh, parent transform uh, selected as well. There's no really no situations where you wouldn't want this. You want to make sure that you have this. If you follow that Photoshop uh, procedure that I just showed you, go ahead and import. And we're going to import 01. And when you do that, all the transform and scaling and all the, all the positioning and stuff should be a okay. It should already be set up for you. So that's one of the advantages of doing everything in Photoshop first. Okay, let's go ahead and preview this and take a look. Now you can see if we preview this, we have our uh, boxing uh, zombie. And you can see as well that the hand below it still remains. So what we can do is we can just like, you know, mask that out if we want. Let's go ahead and exit preview mode and do the same procedure. Let's go to uh, bone layer 11 here. I'm going to open my mask editor. And let's just go ahead and create a rounded mask for the, uh, for the hand uh, area here. Okay, so let's just do something like this. Okay. So again, you want to make sure it's nice and rounded out. We can get rid of all these uh, fingers and everything that were popping up before. We no longer need this because now we have a boxing zombie, okay? And uh, uh, make sure that the uh, limb here is rounded out. All right, and that should be good to go. So we'll close the mask editor. And then if we select our uh, bone in preview here, we'll have the result that we want. So we no longer have the uh, you know hand popping out underneath it. No matter how we rotate it, we're going to have a nice you know, rounded forearms. So boom, 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 boom. There we go. Now we have a professional boxing uh, zombie here. So that's really all I wanted to show you in this tutorial, guys. Uh, thanks so much for watching. Hopefully you learned a lot about the layer manager, its uses, various ways you can use it to improve and to modify your character. And make sure you check out our forums over at forum.reillusion.com as well. And I'll see you in the next video.